Welcome to the final step of target A of the drug discovery labs. So this is going to be the cyclization of your protected dipeptide. Uh, for this, you're going to need your dipeptide, which we've already transferred to a round bottle flask, formic acid, and the glassware to weigh out um, your formic acid into your reaction. Um, we've worked out that we have approximately 3.3 millimole of our dipeptide, so we're going to add 143 milliliters of the formic acid. Remember to add your stir bar. And we'll now clamp this up and leave it stirring for an hour. Our reaction has now been stirring for an hour, so our deprotection should be complete. So we're going to remove the stir bar. And we'll take our reaction and remove the formic acid by rotary evaporation. Removal of formic acid um, is comparable to the removal, removal of water as they have similar boiling points. This will take a while and will need to be under full vacuum. Clip it on or into the water bath. In this case, we just set a low pressure and we'll set it to continuous. Right, as you can see, we've removed the formic acid from a product, which has given us a pale yellow oil. This might be a gunky solid, um, and that's entirely normal. It's substrate dependent. So add a stir bar back in, and we'll then add our mixture of secbutanol toluene, which we've pre-measured in a four to one ratio. Clamp it up. And we'll fit a dry condenser in this case. Leave it to warm up um, and reflux for an hour and a half. As you can see, um, our product has recrystallized after cooling to room temperature. This was left for about an hour, hour and a half. And all these white crystals are our cyclized product, which we will now filter and re -pure. Right, so we've removed the stir bar from our product, and we're now going to filter this recrystallized product. You'll need a filter paper, which you place inside a Buckner funnel, which is attached to a Buckner flask and a vacuum system. We're also going to need some toluene to wet our filter paper and rinse our product. What you want to do is you want to lightly wet the filter paper on your Buckner funnel. We use toluene as our product is not soluble in toluene. And we'll then briefly switch on our vacuum. Give the product a swirl. And you gently pour your product into the center of the filter paper, making sure not to disturb it. As we can see, the filtrate has remained nice and clear, with no solid coming through the filter paper, which means we've had a good recrystallization. There are a few traces of product left in the round bottle flask, so we'll quickly rinse those off with a little bit of toluene. And we'll now leave our product to dry, 10 minutes or so, you would normally wash the recrystallized product with solvent, but as we're going to triturate it, this isn't necessary at this stage. Right, so as you can see, we've taken the white solid that we got from the first filtration, and we've transferred it to a small conical flask. What we're now going to do is we're going to triturate it. This is very similar to doing a recrystallization, but a lot simpler, uh, in that we will add a solvent that our product is not soluble in, but that our impurities are. We will heat it up and our product will not dissolve, it will 
remain a solid, and then we'll just let it cool down, cool it to zero degrees, and filter it in the same way that we have before. So all you want to do is take ethyl acetate in this case, we'll add about 10 to 15 milliliters, and then we're going to use a heat gun to heat this up to boiling. vigorously so we can be confident that any impurities present will dissolve and so we can leave it to cool down and then we'll put it into a nice bath, filter it and we'll have our product. Having now filtered the triturated product um, to remove the ethyl acetate and any impurities in it, we've managed to isolate a nice white solid, fluffy, uh, which might look like filter paper but is in fact your product. You'll now want to characterize this, but you've finished making target A.